Hello everyone! So I don't actually have anything to show you yet because I'm kind of making this on the fly today. Now I have pre-cut things out, stamped things down, and, and gotten things prepared um, so that I can try and move this along pretty quickly, but I made this with you guys, uh, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, and I wanted to make one that was similar to this in a different shape. Um, maybe a little bit more conventional, but still with visual interest. Alright, so a few things we're going to be using, and you'll see that I sort of semi-set some stuff up already too, um, is a piece of Whisper White cardstock, and we're going to be doing the same thing as we did before, only with a little bit of a bigger piece of paper. So this piece of Whisper White is 5 by 10, and it is scored at 5 and six inches. So five inches here and six inches here. I'm going to take the third smallest frame framelit from the labels collection and line these points up at the six inch score line. Put it on uh, the acrylic, one acrylic, and then you're going to take the top acrylic and line it up like that so that it lines up with the six inch score line and you're going to send it through your Big Shot or your Cuddle Bug and then you're going to just switch it. So you're going to take the line from your acrylic, the edge of your acrylic, and line it up with the 5 inch score line and again send it through your Cuddle Bug or your Big Shot, whichever you have. Okay. And I've already done that, and you'll take it apart, apart, and if you remember in the other video, you have it popped out like this. And then you're going to take one side and fold it one way, and the other side and fold it the other way. So you'll have that. Okay? So then you're going to take it and keep it folded. And then you're going to take your big, clear, large, scallop square die, which looks like this, and you're not going to use your tabs plate, you're just going to do basically the same thing as you did. I would use this side so that you can see it through the window. So put it like this, and then if you flip it over, you can kind of see how even in that space you have it. And take my other acrylic and put it on top. And then I'm going to send this through my Big Shot. And I'll be right back. When you pull it out, it's going to look like that. And you can pop it through using this little hole. When you're done with it, you'll have that. How cute is that? Pretty cute, right? So the next thing I'm going to do is just create a little more visual interest because Whisper White is kind of plain, and you like to do a little bit of something extra just to kind of give it that extra little something something. So I'm going to put it in my Petals of Plenty Texture and Embossing folder, and I'm going to send it through my Big Shot, and you pull it out of the folder, and when you put it through your Big Shot, it's going to be a little tight because of all the folds, but it should come out like that actually do it so it's right for you so it should come out like that nice first off I'm going to do the bleaching technique again now for this stamp I use the stippled blossom stamp set and I use this stamp right here and I stamped it down in some Versamark and uh, heat embossed it using some white embossing powder and then again just to cut back on the video time I went ahead and did some faux stitching using my Uniball Signo gel pen. So you're just gonna dip your brush, your um, aqua painter in there, and just do like you did with the other one. Just paint the bleach into all of the unembossed areas. Oh, and this is using Calypso Coral. And so it's just a scrap piece. I stamped it down and then I used the second smallest framelit, labels collection framelit. And look at that. 
this stuff is dying pretty easily already. It's um, bleaching out pretty easily. So far it's kind of yellowy. That's kind of nice. Look at that. That's pretty cool. I kind of like it. I kind of like it a lot. Now I'm going to kind of heat, I'm going to do what I did before and I'm going to heat it from the back to um, sort of speed up the drying and the um, bleaching. And make sure that I don't end up ruining the embossing while doing that. Nice. I kind of like it. Okay. Using the Labels Collection Framelits and this is Pocketful of Posies DSP. It's no longer available, but I love it anyways. <laughs> so I'm going to use it. Um, you're going to take the, again, the third smallest framelit. You're going to need two of those. And I used another piece of Calypso Coral and the um, Tagtastic, again, retired. Sorry, I have a tendency to use a lot of my retired stuff. Um, the Tagtastic stamp set, I used this, thanks, which I used the last time for the yellow piece, this one. Um, I just stamped it down in Versamark and used some uh, white embossing powder again, and then I also did the faux stitching around it, and that will go on the inside. Alright, so I'm going to use a little bit of adhesive on the back of these. Alright, it'll look like that. Then I'm going to take the bleached piece and put some dimensionals on it, on the back of it. Ready? And take it to the inside and put some dimensionals on the back of the thanks piece. And there you go. Okay, so I think I figured out what to do with the inside of this card. How to dress up the inside so that you can write, put something here where you can write a message. I actually pre cut a piece of Calypso Coral using the, um, using the labels collection framelit, the third smallest one. But then what I did was I tucked it in like this. So I, I tucked it in so that it would fit nicely on the back so you wouldn't be able to see it when the card was closed. And then I flipped it over. So I traced using a pencil right here using the inside largest fold on the back. Okay, and then since the blade of the framelit is more towards the inside of the framelit, you'll want to fit it so that it's going to cut close to that line and send it through your big shot. You can take it apart and it's going to look like that. And you can see my pencil line a little bit. All right, so I'm going to erase that pencil line. As long as it closes without being too visible, that's wonderful. All right, so there you have it. That's how you can do the inside. Ta-da! So after kind of sitting on it for a little bit, I came to the conclusion that this needs just a little bit more detail. So what I did was I took my Poppy Parade Stampin' Write marker, and you can also use the Calypso Coral Stampin' Write marker. Um, and kind of tie in the other Calypso Coral piece if you want, if you don't have the Poppy Parade. I do, I wanted to use it, so that's what I'm going to do. So I took those little dots on the centers of the flowers and I just used the, the brush side of the marker, so the, the one that sort of looks like a paintbrush a little bit, and I just kind of held it on those dots for a moment to sort of let the ink spread out onto the dot. It doesn't cover the dot entirely. Um, it just covers it enough that you kind of notice it on the piece. See? That's what I mean. And finally, continuing on with a little bit of continuity, I decided to put a white faux stitch along the inside of that inside piece, or the outside edges of that inside piece. But 
my gel pens are, I think they're on their last legs. They're not really working so well for me anymore. So while I wait for my shipment of my new gel pen, I figured I would give my blender pen a shot. And I dipped it in some Whisper White Craft ink and then just drew some faux stitches along the outside edges. Now it's going to take a little while longer for the craft ink to dry so I'll just kind of set it here and let it dry on its own. Um, but it worked out alright so I just used one end and if you're in a bind you can do that. So that's just another option for you if you like me get caught in a jam where you've run out of ink in your gel pen. <laughs> Kind of stinks when that happens. That's it for now. Until next time, happy stamping!